Come ride the little train that is rolling down the tracks to the junction. Forget about your cares, it is time to relax at the junction. Lots of curves, you bet, and even more when you get to the junction. Petticoat Junction. There's a little hotel called the Shady Rest at the junction. Petticoat Junction. It is run by Kate. Come and be her guest at the junction. Petticoat Junction. And that's Uncle Joe. He's a moving kind of slow at the junction. Petticoat Junction. already done $14 worth of damage. Now, I want this monstrosity out of here and get me a cake of ice for the old icebox. In case you don't think modern, what do you want an outmoded old icebox for? We can have this fancy or deluxe all-electric type refrigerator. It isn't going to work, Uncle Joe. What isn't going to work? Your idea of getting out of work. Who, who lugs 200 pounds of ice up on the train twice a week? Floyd and Charlie. Somebody's got to hold an umbrella over the ice so it won't melt. <laughs> Honey, I don't have time to discuss homework. Since when did you start taking Japanese? I'm not. I started writing in English, and then this thing started vibrating. <laughs> you just gotta do something. What's wrong with learning to write Japanese? <laughs> get this piece of junk out of here and get our nine dollars back. If it's a shake and it's bothering you, all it'll take is a simple little adjustment. <laughs> I think I got it, Kate. <laughs> Go get the ice. A new fuse with the... Get the ice. Kate. The ice. Kate. See, I told you. Go get the, the ice. ice. There. I give you your big chance and you blew it. What do you mean? Oh, you never make an engineer. You only give it 17 squirts. Listen, Charlie, I've been watching you oil a cannonball for 30 years, and you always give it 17 squirts. Then you've been watching wrong. I give it 19 squirts. <laughs> you do that all the time. All right, you two, break it up. I got to get into Pixley right away. Ah, uh, hold your horses. We're settling a railroad matter. We'll settle it later. I got to get some ice. So your $9 refrigerator conked out, huh? It didn't conk. Kate wants to fill an ice bag. She's got a headache. Yeah, from the $9 refrigerator. All right, get that train rolling. As soon as we settle our argument. Yeah! Now, as I was saying, what was we arguing about? I don't know. I thought you was keeping track. <laughs> Joe, what was Freud and me arguing about? Listen, you overstuffed throttle bender. If you don't get me into Pixley, you won't have to wonder what you're arguing about. Listen here, Joe Carson, you can't talk to Charlie that way. Come on, Charlie, don't mind him. Okay, Floyd. Charlie, what did you do with my apple? What apple? The one I put right there. I didn't take your old apple. I put an apple there and it's gone. And it couldn't have walked away. Are you calling me a liar? I ain't calling you a liar. Maybe your memory shot from old age? There's nothing wrong with my memory. You made that same false accusation back on July the 18th, 1953. I did not. Yes, you did. 
That's the day you accused me of stealing your blueberry pie. Hmm. It turned up back in the coach with Mrs. Gunnerson sitting on it. That was July the 23rd, and it wasn't blueberry, it was cherry. And besides that, it was set on by Mrs. Norton. That was your responsibility. I just don't like anybody messing up my train. Your train? What do you mean, your train? Well, I'm the engineer. Well, I'm the conductor. And I'm the passenger. You stay out of this. I gotta get Kate some ice. This train don't move until I say so. What do you mean, till you say so? Says who? Says me. Who said? I said. So's your old man. <laughs> Says who? <laughs> who said? I said. Darn refrigerator. Couldn't have broken one of my everyday pieces. No. Had to be one of my good ones. Well, a few more minutes. This glue will hold. And it'll be good as new. Hey, hey. Uncle Joe, don't smile. Don't... <laughs> There goes a half hour's work ruined. I thought you were on your way to Pixley. Well, I was. Then I got on the train, and then I wasn't. Look, Uncle Joe, I am in no mood for riddles. Now, what's that all about? Oh, Charlie and Floyd, they got into some kind of a fathead argument about who was boss. Well, didn't you tell them why you had to get to Pixley? Yeah, but it didn't do no good. They're steamed up like two clams in a Turkish bath. Well, <laughs> Maybe I can calm them down. Well, they're all yours. They're out on the front porch. Oh. <laughs> Hi, Floyd. Hi, Kate. Hi, Charlie. Hi, Kate. <laughs> nice day, isn't it? Must be a lot of people waiting for a ride on the cannonball. And if Uncle Joe doesn't get to Pixley, my food's gonna spoil. Kate? Yes, Charlie? Would you please ask my pig-headed assistants to go rock someplace else? <laughs> sure. And you can tell that pot-bellied rhinoceros that this is a free country and I rock wherever I darn please. See? <laughs> rock, rock. Yeah. Well, I'm rocking right back at you, see? <laughs> Boys, this is ridiculous. Look here, you grew up together, you went to school together, and you've been working together for the past, let's see, 25 years. 30. Charlie, when you were sick, who brought you that nice hot soup? Floyd. And Floyd, when we had that cold spell last winter, who loaned you the money for an overcoat? Charlie. Now, come on. I want you to stop acting like children and get back on that train. Well. You hear? I want you to shake hands and make up. That's nice. Now you're friends again. Uncle Joe? Yeah, Kate. Okay. You can go fetch the ice now. Charlie and Floyd just made up. <laughs> oh. See, you two clowns made it up. Hey, Floyd, will you come and help me lug the ice up in the train? Charlie says you got more brawn than brain anyway. When did you say that? Yesterday. I ain't making up with nobody that talks behind my back. I ain't been talking behind your back. I didn't know he was such a sore head. Oh, yeah, and I've been putting up with this for 30 years. <laughs> Can't you sure fix things up? Floyd and Charlie are still at it. They're madder than ever. I don't know what happened, but I got a feeling you said the wrong thing. Huh. <laughs> Floyd, won't you please? <laughs> Charlie, isn't there anything? <laughs> Betty Joe. Yes, Mom? Where are you going? Oh, I'm going into Hooterville. Andy Buckles gave me his catchersmith to oil up, and I have to get it back to him in time for the game. Oh, I see. Have a nice ride. <laughs> oh, wait a minute, Betty Jo. I think I have a more important mission for you. <laughs> It's my 
must be important. Oh, it is. The crew of the Campbells are having a mutiny on the front porch. Well, there must be more. As soon as I catch my breath. <laughs> you see, Charlie thinks he's the boss of the Cannonball because he's the engineer. And Floyd thinks he's the boss of the Cannonball because he's the conductor. <laughs> my mom had everything settled. And then Uncle Joe stirred them all up again. You see, he was on his way for ice when the refrigerator came out. <laughs> and, and then... Never mind. <laughs> I'll find out when I get there. <laughs> you go on, Mr. Douglas. Mom's waiting for you at the top of the hill. <laughs> Boys, uh, you know Mr. Douglas. Certainly, Mr. Pratt, Mr. Smoot. Hi. Hi. Mr. Douglas is a lawyer. Yeah, we know. And we know why you brought him here, Kate, to settle our argument. But we don't need no outside help. But, boys... Kate, you shouldn't have brought him here. We don't need no New York lawyer to tell us what to do. No. I'm sorry, Mr. No, Douglas. No, 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 wait, gentlemen. I'm not here as a New York lawyer. I'm here as a member of your community. A new one, perhaps, but but one who deeply appreciates the fact that your train is the main artery of Hooterville Valley. <laughs> Why, without your experienced hands guiding the controls of the cannonball, the produce of the valley wouldn't get to market. Our children wouldn't get to school. The entire economy of the valley would come to a grinding halt. <laughs> Gee, I never thought of it that way. <laughs> well, now, you're both reasonable men. This is a very simple way of solving who's boss, Whose management, whose labor? You simply split up the week. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, you're the boss. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, you're the boss. And if anybody works on Sunday, you alternate. Today's Tuesday, ain't it? That's right, Charlie. Well, that makes me manage. <laughs> All right, Floyd, get your hide on that cannonball and start to stoke in that boiler. Well, Mr. Mansman. Let me wish you the best of luck with your strike. What strike? Me. <laughs> Floyd! What's the idea of the sign? To show the people what you really are. Listen, you're management and I'm labor, and never our twain shall meet. <laughs> Stop following me. <laughs> Doggone it. My darn shoelace is untied. Hold this. <laughs> I don't want this stupid sign. <laughs> But the good old hand car is. Oh, Come on, into your clothes and on your way. Kate, you can't do that. Make those girls pump that hand car 25 miles into school and 25 miles back. You're absolutely right. You can pump the hand car. And while you're in town, would you pick up some ice? <laughs> Forgot your breakfast. Not only is our food gonna spoil, but you are down to your last biscuit. <laughs> Give me a hand here, will you? <laughs> Too puny, huh? Stay.
Instead of wasting your time chasing cats, you should have studied to be a St. Bernard. <laughs> There ain't no sense in giving, Sylvia. There's no way to get your milk to market till this here strike is settled. <laughs> wasting your time, Elroy. Floyd and Charlie are still tiffing. Well, no use letting it all go to waste. <laughs> Settle a strike. That's a wonderful idea, Uncle Joe. I didn't know you were so civic minded. Civic minded, nothing. Pumping that hand car reactivated my lumbago. Hey, I got these all over town. Mm -hmm. You forgot one detail. With the strike on, how are the people going to get out here? <laughs> yeah. uh, you're a good egg, Charlie. Bring me that fresh pair of socks when I was marching to get you. Well, after all, didn't you give me your container of hot coffee so as I wouldn't freeze while I was watching you march? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hi, Hi Kate. Kate. Hi, Hi Joe. Joe. Hi. How wonderful you boys made up. Yeah. You guys got a lot of nerve making up. Me wasting all this time painting the sign. Read it out loud, Charlie, so I'll know what it said. <laughs> Giant Stop the Strike Rally. Shady Rest Hotel, 8 o'clock tonight. Put Charlie and Floyd back to work. So you got to him. Back to who? Joe. Everybody knows that the conductor's name comes before the engineer. Boys. This is Floyd the fireman, not the conductor, and everybody knows that the engineer comes before the fireman. <laughs> yeah? Boys? <laughs> well, I guess you put your big paintbrush in it this time. Can you rally? I gotta come up with something before my back conks out. <laughs> business is to get management and labor to face each other. <laughs> Once arbitration ain't going to get off the ground. Now, the key issue in this railroad strike is, uh, or, uh, oh, uh, feather bedding. Has anybody got anything to say? I have. What is feather bedding? <laughs> yeah, what's feather bedding? <laughs> well, you're a railroad man. You ought to know what that is. Well, how should I know? We ain't got a pullman on the cannonball. Oh, well, that clears that matter. We're really making progress, ain't we? My function is to reconcile the conflicting demands between management and labor. Now, uh, which one of you is management? I Me. am. I, I am management. <laughs> which one of you is labor? Him. 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 Hold it, hold it. I got to look up one of them, uh, what do you call it? Oh, uh, 
Precedent for a labor management dispute without labor. <laughs> okay, that settles that. Now let's get to the core of the matter. Core? Apple. Did you get it? Just a little joke to relieve the tension. <laughs> it ain't no joke when a pig-headed engineer is too cheap to buy his own apple and has to steal mine. You got so much fat in your head, nothing gets through to you. I didn't steal your old apple, see? Please, please, boy. You're on progress and progress. <laughs> <laughs> And me wasting my talents on them two pig-headed mules. I'm telling oh, you, Kate, they Uncle Joe, your rally idea may have been a flop, but that get up is sheer genius. Why, they'll take one look at that, start laughing, and get right back on the cannonball. Hey, this is my arbitrating outfit. They've already seen it. Oh. I'm telling you, Kate, there's just no way to get to them. Uncle Joe, there's a way to get to everybody. <laughs> To I am not. <laughs> Mighty nice of you to invite me to supper, Kate. Don't mention it. Come on in, Floyd. Supper will be ready in a few minutes. Well, if he's eating, I ain't eating. <laughs> well, if you're not eating, he's not eating. So you might as well go back to your signs. Wait a second, Kate. I don't mind eating if he's eating. Because I'm hungry. Here, sit right there. Lloyd, there. But, Kate... If you're not sitting, you're not eating, and he's not eating. Well, I'm sitting. Then you're eating. <laughs> That's my seat you're setting in. Kate told me to sit here. I don't care who told you. I'm the manager of the hotel, and that's my seat. You may be the manager, but Kate's the owner. And I'm the conductor. You keep out of this. Yeah. Don't tell me to keep out of this. I'll tell you anything I want to. Nice going. Uh, supper will be ready in a few minutes, boys. <laughs> It's not done enough. Oh, I say it is. Look, I'm the oldest. I've got seniority. <laughs> How are we doing, Kate? Just fine. Put the chicken over there. Uh, just a minute, dear. Let everything come to a halt. It's time that people around this hotel learned who is boss, and that is final. And in you go. They're too lumpy. No, they're not. I'm the manager around here, no matter what anybody says. Here's your dessert. They haven't had supper. But they're hungry. Then don't give them apple pie, and apple started the whole thing. But they like apple pie. No, they don't. Yes, they do. Don't argue, I'm your mother. <laughs> it's an age-old battle between management and labor. <laughs> what does that mean? It means we're sitting, but we ain't eating. <laughs> Floyd, you reckon they're trying to tell us something? Yeah, that the chicken ain't done, and the potatoes are lumpy, and we don't like apple pie. No, it's management and labor. It's us. It is? What have we been arguing about? I don't know. Well, what are we arguing for? I don't know. <laughs> well, why don't we stop? Hey! Yes? We're friends again. We sure are. Well, fine. Girls, bring in the lumpy potatoes, the underdone chicken, and what's left of the apple pie. Mm. Here you are, boy. <laughs> now we're sitting and eating.
Junction. This has been a Filmways presentation.